So a little over a week ago, I went to Austin, Texas to get my run form assessed by Run Labs. And today, we're going to be reviewing the Zoom call I had with Dr. Halas, talking about what's working, what's not working with my running form, and kind of the stages to go moving forward. Also, if you have similar things going on in your running form or just are looking for general running form advice, this is probably a good video for you. Maybe there's things or tips and tricks that we discussed during this call that could be interesting. So I'm going to share some snippets of the call and we're just going to basically have some reaction moments to it and just kind of discuss some of the things that are going on that otherwise might not have been clear uh, or clearly addressed in the video. So I guess without further ado, let's begin. Let's, uh, let's roll the tape. You run super bouncy, like way, 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 way too bouncy. You have super bouncy. Yeah. And it's also worth noting that I had bolognese or bolognese the night before. So that's my gut really bouncing there too. That's pretty nuts. Have, like you're, you're losing energy. You are, you're going to be really inefficient. My assumption is that you are very, very fast for a moderate amount of time because I assume that you have trained to be um, good for at least some percentage of the things. But as you fatigue and as you go further, you're going to have a hard time running the way that you're running for as long as you want to run. Yeah, story of my life. That's uh, basically almost every marathon up to, I guess, 2022, I would say. Um, I don't think that was the case in 2018. I had at least some sort of efficiency there with the Nike uh, shoe I was running in then. But yeah, as you can probably see in this running form, it is super bouncy. It does feel sort of over-exaggerated uh, in terms of how I'm running, but uh, I think as we kind of get into the video, you'll see uh, some of the adjustments or some of the things that are just kind of happening that are also strange. Um, that's going to be your, your downfall. That's going to be the thing that's going to make the biggest limiting factor for Chicago. So if you were running a 5K or a 10K, my assumption is that me changing your form will result in minimal significant improvements. Or if you're running a 100 meter dash, um, you are incredibly bouncy and incredibly butt kicky. And mm -hmm. then you put your pressure a little bit too far forward because, because you're so bouncy you still have a really massive retraction. So your foot's here, right? So your foot's way up here. And then by the time you hit the ground, your foot has moved backwards a lot. That's so nuts to look at too. Like that the foot has like this hang time basically of about, I guess we discuss it later. It's like maybe seven, eight, or maybe like 10 inches where it's up here. And then it comes down and then there's a push. And that might explain a lot of the times why, like in other shoes, the uh, the rubber is essentially getting smoked a certain direction because there's just this like drag that's occurring, whereas the shoe should just like land pretty much midfoot and just kind of roll along. But yeah, we'll we'll kind of see into that. Uh, other things I know, yeah, like the over eccentric butt kick might be just as a result of this form uh, because of how hard I'm pushing with like this delayed. Um, I'd say like overreach and then hit to the ground. That might be what's occurring here. I don't know if that's the technical terms for it. I, I don't know if that was discussed in this clip. I guess so we'll see here. In most situations when we talk to people who are running, this is the complete opposite problem that they have um, where they run and then their foot is almost like they look like they're walking and their foot's just coming straight forward. They're just coming smashing into the ground. But you run almost like you've read all the things about how to run and you have applied them to an extreme. So the cool thing is for you, you just get to relax. You get to just like tone everything down because you're, you don't have to be that bucket. -y. You don't have to be that toey. And you don't have to have that much of a pullback. And I think if we increase your cadence and just drop you down just a little bit, from a vertical oscillation perspective, I think that you can be really, really fast, really, really quickly. It's probably also worth noting, like you can kind of see it here, 
Um, as a result of the foot kind of hovering a little bit more, it does look like I'm beginning to overstride a little bit. Um, you can see like where my uh, midfoot is in comp in the center picture, like where my midfoot is in comparison to my chest. Like it should line up straight usually. Like even if you lean in with your chest a little bit, it should still be kind of a straight line. In this case, like the line is clearly crooked of, or it's clearly bent with like my uh, midfoot here and then like my chest like over here-ish, even while we're floating. And then like, yeah, the bounciness, that's uh, not helping that scenario whatsoever. If you look at this guy, so you're running at seven, I'll put him at eight. Actually, I have you at eight. I have, I just, let's just make you eight and eight, make it simple. All right. This is you running at eight. This is Dr. Bauer running at eight. Dr. Bauer is a 242 marathoner, right? So he's not like the fastest human alive, but he's a pretty damn good runner. <laughs> and he and you look different and the major difference is that you're extra high so you can see how when his foot comes forward extra high right he's yeah got some space under the bottom of his foot right so he's got this like i don't know like inch inch and a half over the top of his foot before he hits the ground right so his foot's coming forward it steps over that imaginary step and then he goes through that imaginary step so he pulls back down underneath it Right, and then with you, even as your watch check happens, your foot is like I don't know seven inches, six inches above the top of the ground before you pull back again, Damn. which means that you have an amazing pullback, lots of pressure through the cap, great activation through the glute, but you're doing. I don't know about twice as much work, but like you're doing way more work than you need to, to go the speed that you're running. Yeah, twice the work for three times the speed, right? Now in this case, yeah, it's kind of, um, this should be kind of a no brainer, right? Um, it's just, yeah, I don't know what, what I can add to this particular, I mean like, yeah, the gap on the ground is like insane. I never like really thought about that. And maybe it's a lot of it is kind of like what Dr. Hloss mentions, like, you look at certain things or you read certain things uh, and you try to put it all together, but you over accentuate everything. Is that a word or over um, overdo everything to a point where it's starting to turn into like a bad thing. OK, so what might be happening here is like of my hours of watching various marathon races and you're like looking at the front of people's like. Uh, feet while they're running you see like they have like this high grab and whatnot and they have a certain way their feet land and all you see is that dimension of it and like as I'm watching them run I'm thinking okay how do I get my feet to land similar to theirs and like you see that it's like this high grab and this high drop and maybe that's what's occurring here is I've seen that so many times I've practiced it in my brain while sleeping or while actually running and as a result the foot is just simply too high and there's a lot of energy wasted as a result so that's a possibility of the current circumstance. So in a single, like, what do you need to do? What are you going to change? Right? You're a little bit too far onto the toe. toe and you are yeah. unnecessarily bouncy. So you get to just chill and be a little bit more old man jockey. Right? And like this guy here is already bouncier than most of the people that we see, but it's much more efficient because he's moving forward just a little bit over and then he's pulling back into that next side, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like you guys are doing high jump and instead of doing the like flop that you're supposed to, you're just like straight up vertical jumping <laughs> straight over the thing, right? Like it's just, it's just so, so, so much more. And so over time, it's just, gonna it's just gonna exhaust you um does that make sense yeah so okay and obviously i have a conversation with the doc here at some point about it but yeah it's just the vertical oscillation is a lot and there's a lot of energy wasted because i guess like as i'm grabbing into the ground at this point i'm like putting extra force on the ground and then i kick and then two things are also happening there's a different angle of this is number one is that my feet coming back straight 
uh, off the ground and like going straight backwards. We're seeing actually the feet sort of cave in because of how hard I'm pushing on the ground and they're actually coming up sort of like this way. And as a result, the feet are kind of crooked. I uh, end up clipping my calf with like the inside of this uh, part of the shoe on both ends and it kind of makes things interesting. So we'll probably review a little bit of this clip later. Uh, but that's just kind of like the running form in a nutshell, um, as like my Instagram commenters like to say, holy four foot strike Batman. Like, yeah, it is pretty nuts when I look at it like this, but at the same time, it was like, um, you know, they just said run eight minute per mile on like a treadmill and like I felt bouncy and that's kind of what I did because like, as we'll see when I discuss in this, uh, in, in a later video here, I do actually have, um, the Meta Speed Sky Plus which I will review and which I have practiced with. And I've like kept mental notes of like staying lower to the ground, avoiding that vertical oscillation and like emphasizing a midfoot strike rather than that forefoot strike. And as a result, uh, with running in this particular shoe, as I'll discuss later, uh, basically what's happening is it's very hard to get an energy return from a forefoot strike or a heel strike in this shoe. Like you have to kind of get the midfoot to really get that oomph that you're looking for. So we'll kind of discuss that as we go along. But, uh, the last point I guess I want to like discuss here that is probably worth like while and maybe for some of you out there, um, it's not the concept of like doing less hard work and relying more on easy work, but it's like while you do easy, any sort of work whatsoever, just sort of relax a little bit more because in my case, as you can see, like everything is like over overly done to the point where yeah, it's just turning into a bad thing overall in this particular form, okay? So, like the doc said, I get to relax. I get to be a little bit more old man running style, so I get to, like, relax my arms. I get to have a slightly higher cadence. I get to keep my feet lower to the ground. That's the most efficient way to get the marathon, I guess, done. And then the name of the game after the form is in good shape is starting to build some speed and some uh, endurance with that slightly easier form. And it's not to say that this high bounce, high vertical oscillation form cannot be used, because I still plan on having that form just sort of in the bank when the time is right. It's just that that form might be better for something like, I don't know, a five or 10K run where the difference between like staying low to the ground and having this higher vertical oscillation with more kick in the form might be a little bit more negligent. It's not to say that like one form is going to be better than the other in those shorter races, but when it comes to talking about like the Chicago Marathon, you know, the A race itself on the board here, like it's going to be 100% important to be as efficient as possible, or I'm just going to make the same mistake year after year after year during this marathon, which is blowing up somewhere between mile 18 and mile 22 but still finishing with a really good time because I built a bank in the first 16 miles because the form was just uh, just garbage. But I put in a lot of energy in those first miles to bank up a little bit of time to at least have a decent marathon time, but not a sub three like we want for Boston. So I think I'll leave this clip right here for the first few minutes of the form being discussed. Uh, there will be kind of a follow-up if necessary, or I'll just like uh, put it somewhere else or I'll paste the rest of it in uh, later as I'm editing this video and I feel it needs to be kind of placed. I'll add it to the end here. I'll You'll see like by the duration of this video if I chose to add it or not, um, if there's like important things to discuss. But this is the main piece I wanted to talk about was like what's going on with my existing form versus what it needs to become in like the next six to eight months for the marathon leg of my running career. So I'll leave it at that. If you got value out of this, let me know in the comments below if you, there wasn't much value to what you saw here because it's my form and not yours or something along those lines. Like any feedback is good because I like to kind of assess this on my end. But if you think it's just weird assessing my form versus like somebody else's or comparing it otherwise, like then yeah, I don't need to like put that much time into it. It could be just be more for like self-documentary sake. But yeah, let's actually uh, kind of just build on this. If you want to see more of this and I don't paste it, uh, let me know as well. But uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it here. So thanks again for watching. We got, uh, we got run forms to clean up and continue fixing on this road to Chicago 2024. So yeah, we'll get it done. So thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next one.